So you've got some data. Either you collect it by hand or you know you collect it using one of these IO lab or other devices, and you've got it in a nice big comma separated values file. What do we do with that? How do we get those data into Python so we can use all the tools of computer programming to analyze these data? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Here I got some data collected by IOLAB. You can see it's the position of the wheel as a function of time. And I've already gone through and made a CSV file using the procedure described in the lab, lab manual. Basically click this little button and you can see that you get an export to CSV option. Now, we do all of our programming in the Google Colab uh, development environment. So you got to save the stuff to Google Drive in order so that Colab can find it. So I've got my CSV and it's in Google Drive somewhere. The next step is to go and figure out how to get those data into Python so that we can analyze it. So here's our Python notebook. I've called it Getting Data Into Pandas. And all the notebooks for this class are in a single Google Drive, which is linked from the LMS so that you can get them later and look at them for reference. So the first step is we got to tell Python that Google Drive exists. Now, fortunately, somebody's already done this for us. There's a whole module with full of packages that will do all of these things for us. So what we need to do is we need to get the Google Drive package. Now, where is that? First, we have to tell Python where to get it. The Google Drive package is in google.colab. And then from that package, we can import drive. This will bring all the tools, all the functionality to access Google Drive into Python. Doesn't do anything with them yet, but it brings them in. So now we have all the functionality that we need to use Google Drive within Python. But now we've got to tell Python that we want to go looking in our Google Drive. So the way we do that is we do drive.mount and content.drive is exactly what we want. Content.drive, I mean slash drive. It's going to ask you for some permissions. So you got to go and connect it. You use your UMass account, continue. Now it wants a whole bunch of permissions. I only gave it five. I didn't actually give it all the permissions. I didn't give it the permission for photos or anything with my mobile contacts or anything like that. I didn't give it those permissions. You can if you want, I didn't. And then hit continue. And now you can see it's thinking and it's trying to connect Python to our Google Drive. And that can take a little bit of time, particularly the first time. The next thing we're gonna do is bring in a whole nother set of uh, tools, a whole nother package called Pandas, import Pandas. So Pandas is another package, which is a bunch of tools for data analysis, averages, statistics, all sorts of things. So that's going to be useful for us too. Now, Pandas stores data in something called a data frame. A data frame is effectively just a big table of all your data. So let's make a Pandas data frame with a file that's in our Google Drive. So I'm going to create a data frame. I'm going to call it DF for data frame. Pandas, because that's the package with all the tools we need. Read CSV is exactly what we want. One of the nice things about the Google Colab environment is it makes pretty good suggestions. And you can see that you want most of this. So, right? So let's just go with that. Content, oops, I need to slash there at the front, content, 
drive, my drive, no space, and now where you put things. So I put things pretty close to the top so I don't have to type as much. Colab notebooks, and I put the data in a place called video on pandas. So here's my drive. You can see it's in this subfolder called video on pandas. And that's where the CSV file is. So I got to put that all in. Colab notebooks, video on pandas slash 2024 uh, 09904-902020 uh, underscore wheel dot CSV. This is the hardest part to get right because you got to make sure that this is exactly correct. The first three things, slash content, slash drive, slash my drive will be the same basically for everybody. After that, it starts getting maybe a little bit tricky to make sure that you've typed this all in correctly so it knows where you're going. All right, you hit enter. Looks like I typed it in right, so everything is looking good. Like I said before, a data frame is basically a table, and we can even see what that table looks like by doing df.head. This will show us the head, the, the top of our table. So there you go. Now you can see what our table looks like, our data table. And it looks exactly like the CSV we have. You have index, frame, sample, time, raw zero, cal zero, raw one, cal one, raw two, cal two. You see you've got the exact same columns here and the rows also match. So the first frame is 10 and then 11, 12, 13, 14. First frame is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And one of the, again, one of the nice things about working collab is you get these suggestions. These suggestions are great. So you can even, if you want, say, give me some of the recommended plots. Let me see what kind of plots I might want to make. And you can see it's basically trying all the different combinations. This is the one that uh, seems like it should be what our IO lab wants. So I'm going to click it and there you go. So now I've got the wheel as a function of time, exactly like I had back on the IO lab. Same shape. I can see it again. So that gives me some confidence that I'm doing things right. The last piece that we want to do right now is learn to see how many rows are in our data frame. How many indices are there? How many rows? So the way we can do that is there's another pandas function that we have. So we can do, I'm going to call it count df.shape. So df is, again, the data frame where all my data are stored. Shape is telling me how many rows. And then the zero says how many rows are in the first column. Cool thing about pandas, probably won't use it in this class, is that a data frame in pandas, all the rows don't have, all the columns don't have to have the same number of rows. Different columns can have different numbers of rows. This can actually be useful if you're missing data or something. But in this class, you'll probably have you know, the same number of rows in each column. So I'm going to do the first column, zero. An important thing about programming in general is we don't count from one when we're writing computer programs. We start from zero. So the very first column index here is column zero. And so this code snippet says, take our data frame and tell me how many rows are in that first column, column zero, and then store that result in the variable count. And then I can simply print count to see how many rows there are. And it says there are 184. And if we go back to our uh, table here, our CSV file, we can see if we scroll down, there are 183 rows, wait, but remember we started from zero, right? We didn't start at one, we started at zero. So 183 rows plus a zeroth row is 
the 184 that we expect. So that's the all we expect you to learn uh, this week is we expect you to be able to add um, Google Drive to Colab, to Python here in Colab, mount your Google Drive, import pandas to your Python, use pandas to create a data frame from a data file, a CSV here, print the first few rows of that data file using head, and finally count how many rows are in your data file using this shape command. That's all we expect you to do. The graph is nice, but we're not really getting to there yet. And that's all we expect you to do this week.